Shout out to the ancestors. Shout out to the ancestors. Don't get no fuck if you don't understand We're going to be all right, America. Shout out to the ancestors. Going to get this research on real quick. Now I just hope that you can understand that. You can dig it. Dying you with me? We're going to get this get this work, y'all. This is a disclaimer. This is a res- this is a uh, informational video, okay? All right, get that understood. I'm not hating on nobody. All right, I, I want to make sure y'all hear me. This is not for the weak hatred or the closed minded, even though it was supposed to be meant for everybody. All right. Now, um, it's just a little disclaimer. I get that out the way. Uh, let's get this started, man. The top is it's, it's October 23rd. All right. The day I was born is coming up. That's on the 30th. So I've been, I don't know. I've been pushed to do this shit lately. I, 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 ain't, I make music and I ain't even been inclined to do that lately. I've been on this. So, uh, we finna get this started. With that being said, it's finna be Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving, this holiday y'all, y'all, uh, love to eat on. Y'all love eating on Thanksgiving. And what do y'all mainly eat on Thanksgiving? All right. Now, I, I know my grandma used to make a lot of sides. My grandma still make, you know, my, my family members, period, they make a lot of sides. But most of the sides got meat in it too, okay? Now, I just want to, uh... Put emphasis on some of these animals that we eat. Like uh, the main dish is the turkey, first of all. But you know what I'm saying. I'm finna start off by talking about in, in animals indigenous to North America. All right. These animals were here before anybody that wasn't here got here. You understand? Or you understand? Or you overstand? Do you dig what I'm saying? These animals were here first. They are indigenous to America. I I, I guess I got to do this for, for y'all real quick. Just because I don't like, uh, I don't like talking. I want to show you. I do like talking. I'm talking shit right now. But uh, I want to still show y'all what, what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? And for those that know what indigenous is, this ain't for you. This is for those people that obviously don't know. Indigenous. Originating or occurring naturally in a particular place. Then it got native on the side. The indigenous peoples of Siberia, okay? Indigena is the origin of that. It's a Latin, comes from a Latin word. Indigenous. Deals with genes. Deals with genes. We're going to uh, go back to over here real quick, though. All right. The, uh, some of the indigenous mammals include the American bison, which is the buffalo, eastern cottontail, black-tailed jackrabbit, plains coyote, black-tailed prairie dog, muskrat, opossums, raccoons, prairie chickens, wild turkeys, the wild-tailed deer, swift foxes, pro- pronghorn antelope, the Franklin ground squirrel, and several other species of ground squirrels, okay? I'm pretty sure there's many more, but there goes some right there just to uh, start for starters. Now, I'm going uh, I'm to tweak this search real quick and put in um, that are endangered. Let's see how many of those animals that are indigenous to North America. Let's see how many of those that are in, that are endangered. It says a number of wild species found on this continent are threatened with extinction. The Vancouver Marmot. Staghorn Corral, Red Wolf, Rab's Fringe Limb Tree Frog, Pygmy Raccoon, the Ohu Tree Snails, excuse my pronunciation if I'm wrong, Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle, and the Giant Sea Bass. Okay. Uh, I'm, I, I was uh, watching this cartoon called Cities of Gold. This shit didn't air in America, but um, they was calling America Turtle Island when they pulled up to this motherfucker. The natives, the indigenous people that was here, they was calling it Turtle Island. So I'm sure it was a bunch of giant turtles and shit too that you don't see a lot of nowadays. Uh, tortoises or turtles. Um, one of the main reasons for the buffalo being gone because you don't see a lot of them 
you do not see a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? And that and that shit comes from them doing this act. They had an act, all right, that allowed them to kill the buffalo. This 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 is it was a homestead act. I'm sorry, it's the name of the Homestead Act of Killing Buffalo. Alright, a people, this comes from, this is a passage in a book called Cengage Advantage Books, A People and a Nation, A History of, I'm pretty sure this is the Americas. I don't have this book, of course. I just want y'all to uh, get in on this with me. You know what I'm saying? A History of the United States, Volume 2. Okay. No, it's just for the title. I want y'all to know what I'm know know what I'm reading. I ain't doing this for no reason. Y'all, I'm forcing this research on y'all. You know what I'm saying? What and, and what I will do is I will get uh I will get this get this uh page a lot more entertaining for y'all, but as of right now, we just need to get this work. You know what I'm saying? When I say entertaining, I mean I'm gonna have music in the background most of the time and stuff like that. And uh I just wanna give a shout out. I'm gonna stop and give a shout out to my subscribers. And uh, the ancestors on my ass right now telling me to stay focused, get back on the subject. I'm finna get right back on it, but I just want to give a shout out to my little subscribers right now. I appreciate y'all for subscribing. If you ain't already subscribed, hit that like button and subscribe right now for me. Please do that for the boy. Please, please do that for the king. All right. Here we go. I'm finna start reading Homestead Act, 1862. Uh, chronology, which is the study of. Uh, anytime you see ology, it's the study of something. Know that that that's some, that deals with etymology, because it got ology at the end. It's the study of something. Homestead Act grants free land to citizens who live on and improve the land. Moral land grant acts give state. Moral Land Grant Act gives states public land to sell in order to finance agricultural and industrial colleges. Chivingston's militia massacres Black Kettles Cheyennes at Sand Creek. That's in 1864, 1869. First Transcontinental Railroad completed. 1872. Yellowstone becomes first national park. 1876. Lakotas and Cheyennes ambush Custer's federal troops at Little Bighorn, Montana. 1877. Nez Perce Indians under young Joseph surrender to U.S. troops. All right. 1878. Timber and Stone Act allows citizens to buy Timberland cheaply, but also enables large companies to acquire huge tracts of forest land. For you niggas that like the word Timberlands too, this video is for y'all. Cause uh, I mean, I mean, I tell you what, I like Timberlands myself before I knew what the fuck what was up. But um, take a permanent marker and X out that motherfucking tree. Or something. Customize them bitches or something. Right? Draw all on them bitches. All right? Uh, buy them from buy them from buy them from the boot. Buy them from a goddamn discount mall if you can. Don't spend no money with that motherfucker. Fuck them. All right? Um, Timber and Stone Act allows citizens to buy Timberland cheaply, but also enables large companies to acquire huge tracts of forest land. And and for the for y'all smart Alex, I know damn well they're not talking about the Timberland boots. I'm just one of the niggas that don't know, you know what I'm saying? To pay attention to the fact that them boots is called Timberlands. 1879. Carliso School for Indians established in Pennsylvania. For all you little motherfuckers that's going to public schools right now. Excuse me. For all you parents that sending the kids to public schools. Me, myself, was sent to a public school, or I went to a public school. I'm just saying, these same public schools uh, come from shit like this. Schools for Indians, all right? That's what the fuck them schools is for. 
to ind to indoctrinate your motherfucking ass, keep you from knowing who you is, all right? 1880, 18 through 1881. Many pennies are Indian wards. And Jackson's A Century of Dishonor influenced public conscience about poor government treatment of Indians. All right. Chinese Exclusion Acts prohibit Chinese immigration to the United States. That's in 1881. That's in 1881. 1882. They was trying to stop Chinese motherfuckers from getting over here. Why? Hmm. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a video on that. I don't know what what they was on. Chinese Exclusion Acts prohibit Chinese immigration to the United States. All right, y'all. I, mean, I take back what I just said. Prohibit. But still, who the fuck is they to prohibit any motherfucking thing? They had just got here around that motherfucking time. They ain't even been here for that long, and they was already trying to prohibit some shit. 1883, National Time Zones established. So, so, so in 1883, the National Time Zones was established. Okay? That's how new stuff. Most of this shit is new. Really do. U.S. Supreme Court first denies Indians as wards under government protection. Ain't that about a bitch? I'm gonna keep going. I'm sorry I'm reading so slow. I just I'm, I gotta do this. Dawes Severalty Act ends commun communal ownership of Indian lands and grants land allotments to individual Native families. Devastating winter on plains destroy countless livestock and forces farmers into ec economic hardship. Hmm, I wonder why they had a motherfucking devast a devastating winter. Final suppression of plains, Indians, by U.S. Army at Wounded Knee. Census Bureau announces closing of the frontier in Yosemite National Park established. 1892. Muir, or that word looked like more to me, but Muir. Helps found Sierra Club. 1902, Newlands Reclamation Act passed. Now, here we go with this read. I'm going to get this, some of this reading on. Pushed out of nourishing grazing territory and faced threats of starvation. That's the ending of another sentence. But uh, bear with me. When whites arrived on the plains, so called whites, when whites arrived, when so called whites arrived on the plains, they too. Sought to settle in the same river basin areas. When I say so-called whites, I don't like calling their ass white because they're not white. Stop saying that shit. But I'm just going to I'm gonna say it for communication purposes on this video. I'm not going to keep stopping and, and doing that. But, but for communication purposes, I'm going to say so-called whites because I ain't even going to keep on upping their ass. They're not white. Anyways. They, too, sought to settle in the same river basin areas. Thereby... Further forcing buffalo away from nutritious grasslands. Evil motherfuckers. At the same time, lethal animal diseases such as anthrax and brucellosis brought in by white-owned livestock, which is the shit that they brought here that wasn't indigenous to the land. That shit brought diseases. So not only did you motherfuckers bring diseases, but you brought diseases with you and the animals that you was eating had diseases? Decimated buffalo already weakened by the malnutrition and drought. At the same time, lethal animal diseases such as anthrax and brucellosis brought in by white owned livestock. Decimated buffalo already weakened by malnutrition and drought. So these motherfuckers, the buffalo was already dying from not being able to eat shit from what the fuck they was doing. On top of dying from buff uh dying from diseases. Increased number of horses, oxen, and sheep owned by white newcomers as well as by some Indians also upset the buffalo's grazing patterns by devouring grazes that they depended on at a certain time of the year. So that means that the other animals was not able to fucking eat so they died off. Because the buffalo had to eat shit that, that, that they were supposed to be eating. You know, It, it just created a, it's, it's a domino effect. So all of that shit killed the buffalo. Now it was the other way around. I just read that a little wrong. Um, the buffalo's grazing patterns was upset by the increased number of horses and oxen and sheep owned by white newcomers. Yeah. All right. That's what happened when the herd get in. But uh, by devouring grasses that they depended on at certain times of the year. In some. 
Human and environmental shocks created vulnerability amongst the buffalo, to which mass killing only struck the final blow. By the 1800s, only a few hundred of the 25 million buffalo estimated on the plains in 1820 remained. By the 1880s, only a few hundred. All right, that's by the 1880s. But only a few hundred of the 25 million buffalo estimated on the plains in 1820 remained. I don't understand how we not talk talk this shit in school. In the Northwest, the basic wild source of Indian food supply, salmon, suffered a rate similar to that of the buffalo, but for different but for different reasons. White commercial fishermen and canneries moved into the Columbia and Willamette River valleys during the 1860s and 1870s. I sound half retarded because I can barely see, so let me zoom in real quick. Now if I still fuck up, y'all can talk shit. All right. And they harvested increasing numbers of salmon running up upriver to spawn before laying their eggs. So the fish supply was not being replenished. By the 1880s, they had greatly diminished their salmon runs on the, Cal on the Columbia. There they go. They finna talk shit now. And by the early 1900s, the construction of dams on the river and its tributaries further impeded the salmon's ability to reproduce. The U.S. government protected Indian fishing rights, but not the supply of fish on the river. Hatcheries helped restore some of this supply, but dams built to provide power, combined with overfishing and pollution, diminished salmon stocks. So you ass wonder why you can't go fish for no salmon in the river? That's why. Buffalo slaughter and salmon re reduction undermined Indian subsistence. But a unique mix of human demography, uh, I want to say demography, uh, demography, contributed as well. For most of the 19th century, the white population that migrated in the western, into the western lands inhabited by Indians was overwhelmingly young and male. In 1870, white men outnumbered white women by 3 to 2 in California, 2 to 1 in Colorado, and 2 to 1 in Dakota Territory. By 1900s, preponderances of men remained throughout these places. Most of these males were unmarried and in their 20s and 30s. The stage of life when they were most prone to violent behavior. In other words, the whites with whom Indians were most likely to come into contact first were explorers, traders, trappers, soldiers, prospectors, and cowboys, and almost all of whom possessed guns and had few qualms about using their weapons against animals and humans who got in their way. So these motherfuckers came strapped and they were shooting shit. They were shooting shit. I'm about, to, I'm about to wrap up this little page right here. I got a lot more to go. Moreover, these men subscribed to prevailing attitudes that Indians were primitive, lazy, devious, and cruel. Such contempt made exploiting and killing natives all the easier. And whites often justified violence against Indians by claiming preemptive defense of threats to life and property. I bet your ass was threatened. When Indians raided white settlements, they sometimes mutilated bodies, burned buildings, and kidnapped women. Acts that were embellished in campfire stories, pamphlets, and popular fiction, all of which reinforced images of Indian savage as savages. So, uh, I'm gonna stop right here and say something. So, when when they when they fuck with us and deem us to be crazy and savages and shit, and then we fuck around and act like the shit that they call us. It's going to reinforce the images of that shit. So when they call us thugs and when they treat us like shit and then we go out and rob shit or kidnap their motherfucking kids or rob their stoves and shit and they wonder why or uh, 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 we wonder why we getting shot down. We're deemed to be savages. We're reinforcing the images that they put on us. We keep going. Amongst the bachelor society of saloons and cabins, men boasted of their exploits in Indian fighting and showed off trophies of scalps and other body parts taken from victims. Indian warriors, too, were young, armed, and prone to violence, valuing bravery and, ve and vengeance. They boasted of fighting white interlopers, but Indian communities contrasted with those of whites in that they contained excess of women and children, making native bands less mobile and therefore vulnerable to attack. They also were susceptible to the bad habits of bachelor white society. I'm going to stop right there because it ain't talking no more about what I want to talk about, but... Uh, I want y'all to see some of these pictures, some of these pictures of the uh, buffalo that they was killing. 
Like this shit, some this shit is crazy. So remember, remember how we read? Remember I just read how uh, what they was doing? They wanted railroad tracks, and they did it for for uh, you know, for the land to get to 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 make playing fields and shit. But look at this. Look at this. Look at all them motherfucking buffalo heads. One, two, three. I'm not finna count them all. Look at that. That's one person right there. That's two. Per that's another person standing on top of a pile of buffalo heads. It says slaughtered men in the mid 1870s posed with a mountain of buffalo school skulls. I mean shit. I mean shit. Wall of bones. A long pile of buffalo bones stretches into the distance. Into the distance, my nigga. Into the distance. That's how. That's how many they killed. Look at this shit. Kill your motherfucking self. Look at this shit. It was it was a homestead act. It's a homestead act. Now, Thanksgiving time coming. Thanksgiving time coming, right? Y'all love turkeys. Y'all love turkeys, right? Y'all love turkey. Y'all go y'all go right to the grocery store. Go buy you a go go y'all go go buy a turkey that's already been killed. Ain't y'all don't even know what the fuck is up in that motherfucker, but y'all don't care. Y'all I'ma say we. I'm a, I'm not gonna include I'm not gonna exclude myself. Even though I ain't never went in that motherfucker and bought a turkey, but then ate turkey before. So I'ma say me too. I'ma say us. We'll go in the grocery store and we'll buy some turkey. We'll go home, cook the turkey, eat the shit, and won't think about mother where that motherfucker came from, who was the turkey. We won't give a fuck about the turkey. But we'll have a pet dog and feed it dog food and shit and let it sleep in the house and sleep in the bed and turn around and eat a piece of chicken. Like, that shit ain't crazy as fuck. How can you have a pet and eat? How can you have a pet mammal? I see if you, I see if you got a pet mammal, but you eat insects. Or you got a pet insect, but you eat mammals. Y'all motherfuckers is sick. Y'all mammals with pet mammals that eat mammals. <laughs> mammals with pet mammals that eat mammals. The hell? <coughs> Anyways. One of these animals that's indigenous to America is the wild turkey. Okay? The wild turkey. We're going to put in Americas because I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's turkeys all over. Here they go. Here, here they go. I, I I can't stand when I see shit like this, but whatever. Native Americans have hunted wild turkey for its meat as early as 1000 AD. Turkeys are also used as clan animals in some Native American cultures. Turkey feathers have been used in the traditional regalia of many tribes particularly the feathered cloaks of eastern woodland indians like the wampanoag or wampanoag i think if i'm pronouncing that right now we finna look up turkeys are also used as clan animals wild turkey in native american culture 